Okay, you know, and welcome to your video tutorial on congruent triangles. Today we are going to have a look at what congruency means, and in particular, we're going to look at the geometric shape of a triangle. <laughs> well, when two shapes have the same shape and size, we say that they're congruent. They are identical in every way. Have a look at these two shapes below. Even though I've got different letters on them, side AB, one line, that angle is different from that angle. Let's see this shape. Oh, okay, okay, yep. That exact same side, one line, that angle is different from that angle. Okay, what else do we have? Corresponding down the right-hand side of that, we have another line, same on there, and across, same on there, and up, same on there. These two are identical in every single way, except for the fact that the second one's just been flipped upside down. They are identical in every single way. We call that word, we don't say the word identical anymore, we call it congruent. Now what you're going to be asked to do today is prove that things are congruent. We don't need every single piece of information like we had in that last example. We don't need all the angles on all the sides to prove that something's congruent. We only need certain pieces of information. Depending on what information we have depends on what test we can use to see if they're congruent. There's four. The triple S test, side, side, side. The side angle side test. Okay, and there's two more. Let's look at these first two. If three sides of the triangle are respectively equal to the other three sides of the other triangle, then they are congruent. So if you're dealing with sides and you have three sides that are, and they are respectively identical, that means that see how this one here and that one there are right next to each other? That's respectively identical. If in, this, if in this second example instead we had that one with three lines and that one with two down there, they would not be respectively identical, okay? Because this bottom almost looking base is over this side, okay? They have to be respectively identical, so identical in relation to the other one. Um, that's one way to test. The triple S, the side, side, side test, if we're given three sides. If we're only given two sides and an angle, we can also test for congruency. So that's the SAS test, the side, angle, side. If we have two sides and an included angle of a triangle that are respectfully equal to the other two and included angle of the other triangle, then they are congruent, okay? If and only if they are respectively equal. So this one is equal in relation to this one. The last two tests are called angle side, angle, angle side and right angle hypotenuse side. So like I said, we don't need all information. We can also test for congruency if we have two angles and only one side. If two angles and one side of a triangle are respectively equal to the other one, then the two tri triangles are considered congruent. Just like if we have a right angle and a hypotenuse, so the, uh, the side that's opposite the right angle, and another side, and they are respectfully equal, okay, then the two triangles are considered congruent, okay? So if we've got a right angle in both of them, the side opposite the right angle is equal, and the other side is respectfully equal, then they consider congruent. So... Let's have a look. What kind of things could you be asked to do with this knowledge? How, what evidence do you need to be able to provide to prove that you understand congruency? Well, you may be asked to uh, show what kind of test you'd use. Would you use the triple S? Would you use SAS? Would you use AAS or RHS? This tells that you understand that you provide a test based on the information that you have. So let's look at these examples. Okay, I have two triangles here in A. I've been given two angles that are respect, uh, two sides that are respectfully equal and an angle. They are congruent. What test would I use to prove that? Well, two angles and a side, that's the A 
uh, two sides and an angle, sorry, see, I've already made a mistake, two sides and an angle, that would be the SAS, two sides and an angle. B, uh, C, because I'm going to go down the page and be confusing. C here, I have two angles and a side, okay? Those two angles are respectfully equal. Those two angles are respectfully equal and I have one side, okay? So angle, angle side test would be the one I would use to prove that. This last one here, um, based on the identifiers, I have two dots, these, these, two, thing, uh, these two angles, which appear to be on the same line that's on the right angle. They're respectfully equal, okay? One of my other sides is respectfully equal, and I have a right angle. Now, immediately most of us would say, oh, okay, that's, well, I've got a right angle, so it might be, must be right angle hypotenuse side. But we have to stop for a second. This one says right angle hypotenuse side. But the side I've been given that show that they're respectfully equal aren't the hypotenuse. These ones here are the hypotenuse. So I can't actually use that right angle hypotenuse side proof anymore. That right angle is also just another angle that I've been given. So I technically have also been given two angles and a side. So the proof method that I would have to use to provide these, the evidence that these triangles are congruent is angle, angle, side. Okay, it's really important to note that. B up here, let's have a look at B, <clears throat> this one here. I've been given, okay, this time I have been given the right angles. I've been given the hypotenuse, which are respectfully equal, and I've been given a side. Okay, so for that one, by all means, I can use right angle hypotenuse side. D and here should be pretty easy. This one here, they are congruent. All of these examples, guys, are congruent. I'm just getting you to try and link the proof methods. Three sides would be the evidence that I'd use to prove they're congruent. This one here, I've been given the right angle, so immediately my head I go right angle hypotenuse side, but I need to stop. That's the hypotenuse, and I haven't been given that, so I can't use this method to prove. Kill that. I've also been given two sides and an angle, okay? So actually, the proof method that I use would be side, angle, side. Okay, another thing that you'd need to be able to demonstrate to prove that you have an understanding of congruency would be to take these notions that tri triangles can be congruent okay, and be able to find out missing information. Now let's have a look at these, okay. Here's my angle given in here. I've been given an angle and a side that's identical, okay. I know I have another angle that's equal. So two angles and a side, angle here, angle here, and this side, which is three, which means that my two triangles are congruent. So the first thing I, I know to prove these triangles are congruent is I have um, angle, angle, side. Two angles that are in the same position that are indicating they're equal. Two, yeah, sorry, two angles in both that angle and that angle and that angle and that angle that are respectfully in the same position and are indicated via that little icon, uh, that via the diagram that they are equal and a side that is both listed as three. So they're congruent, which means that the other sides will also be equal in relation to the information I have here. If this side here is five, okay, the respectful side in the other diagram is this one here. So that means for A, X would be 5. Okay, for the other side that's missing in my initial diagram, this side here, Y, its respective side in my triangle that is here in B would be 7. So Y equals 7. I can use pieces, once I've found out the triangles are congruent, sorry, I can use pieces of information in the other triangle to fill in the missing pronumerals in the other one. Let's look at this example here. Again, guys, what do I have to prove? What evidence do I have to provide to prove that I have learnt this beyond reasonable doubt? 
you will have to use information from past lessons occasionally as well. Now, let's have a look at this one here, okay? I've got a side here and a side here that are indicating they're equal. A double side down here, a double side down here. And furthermore, I've got a triple one here and a triple one here. So if I'm looking for evidence to prove that these are congruent, the triple S test passes it. The triple side or side, side, side test tells me that these triangles are congruent. So their measures, measurements or the missing things will be respectful in terms of the other triangle. Now, this blue one is down the bottom here. It's just flipped up the other side on the, uh, on the second, on this guy here. It's just kind of flipped upside down a little bit. So if it's 25 degrees over here, that corresponding corner on my first triangle is going to be down here. So A is going to be equal to 25 degrees. Okay, A is going to be equal to 25 degrees. That covers off A. Good. Oops, I was meant to do that black. That covers off A. Good, I've done A. Okay. B. Oh, no. Look at B. B's missing in this one here, and it's missing in this one here. How the hell am I meant to prove what B is if they're missing in both of them? Okay, let me see what I know. Let's uncolor this for a second. What have I learned in a past lesson? What do I know already about triangles? Hmm, what are the angles in a triangle all equal up to? 180, okay. I know this one's 25. And that's 100. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I know what I can do. I know the interior angle sum of a triangle. If I know that, that means that if I have two, I can find the missing one. So B must equal 180, which is the interior sum of all three of them. So three of them all together equal 180. And I've, I, if I've already got one of them that's 100 and one of them that's 25, the other one must be 55 degrees. So B must equal 55 degrees. And that's it, guys. It's a matter of being able to prove that you understand congruency and be able to take information from past lessons and adopt them in future lessons.